Before we get into our main subject today, just want to give you this public service announcement. This came with my electric bill, and I thought it was kind of hilarious. Dayton Power and Light urges gamers to stay away from utility equipment while playing the popular Pokemon Go game on your mobile device. Okay. Well, you can read this if you want. But uh, what they're saying here, some players try to catch electric types of Pokemon near substations or transformers. Well, I must admit, I know nothing of Pokemon game. I don't know anything about it. But did they design it so there's Pokemon around substations or transformers? <laughs> that sounds funny. Kind of sad that they have to tell people this, but... I don't know. But there you go. On to the subject. Well, today I'm going to try an experiment. I'm going to use different size transformers to see how it affects the power output from an amplifier. And I'll use this LM1875 amplifier that I built in a previous video. Now I can get 25 30 watts of clean power from this thing but due to the transformers I'm using I'll be limited to about I don't know 16 watts or so into a 4 ohm load but one transformer is smaller and it will affect the output we'll see how that plays about as I move along with the experiment well, here is a split supply. That's common with hi-fi type amplifiers because it eliminates the output coupling capacitor. And it's called a split supply or dual supply because it has three output wires. You have your center ground, zero reference point, a plus voltage supply, and a neg negative voltage supply. And I drew the output of an amplifier, just the output transistors only, because that's really all I need to describe what's going on here. So when you put a signal into the amplifier, and it's swinging on the positive part, this transistor is turned on, so current can travel through that transistor and through the speaker and return back to ground. And when that signal goes negative, this transistor turns on. And following conventional current flow, current flows this way back into the negative side. So now you can see the first time current went this way through the speaker. And on the negative cycle, current went this way. So now we get AC to our speaker. And we don't have to use a output coupling capacitor. And having that coupling capacitor eliminated allows you to get very low frequencies. Say you're driving a low impedance load like a 4 ohm speaker and you want to get a frequency that's, you know, a response that's flat down to 20 hertz. Well, you'd need a very large capacitor to do that because it would start attenuating the signal due to capacitive reactance. So having it direct coupled lets the signal go through unabated and we get full output at very low frequencies. And that's pretty much the reason why we have the split rail type supplies. Well let's say I'm designing an amplifier. I want to know what voltage I need for my uh, split rail supply that's going to drive the amplifier. Okay, like I said, let's say I'm making a 16 watt amplifier and I'm going to drive a 4 ohm load. So I would use this formula to determine the peak output. I don't really care about RMS because I want to know the peak because I need to set my supply rail voltage 
somewhat above that to make this work. So the square root of power times the uh, nominal impedance, we'll just say R, times 2 gives us the voltage peak. So in this example, 16 times 4 times 2, we take the square root of that result and we come up with 11.3 volts peak. Now the problem is in the real world amplifiers cannot swing their output all the way to the rails because there's emitter resistors, there's losses in the transistors and it depends on the amplifiers topology you know how the output circuit is set up and that determines how close to the rails and with 4 ohm load impedance it it makes the uh, requirement even more so I'm going to say we need about 4 volts on each side here so I'm going to set the voltage rails required at 15.3 now this is just a complete guess because you know playing around with amplifiers I know the voltage losses a bit and can come up with a reasonable estimate of what it should be okay now you have to select a transformer and on the secondary of the transformer you need a center tap type minimally sometimes they have separate windings that you can tie together in the middle but this one is just a center tap transformer with the of course the outer legs and those are usually rated a certain way like let's see here I don't know if you can see that it doesn't show up too well but on that transformer the secondary says 12.6 dash 0 dash 12.6 that just means that zero is the center tap which here the black wire is the center tap and the yellows are the two outer legs so they're just setting zero as the center tap one outer leg is 12.6 the other outer leg is 12.6 as well so the actual voltage output of this transformer across the yellow legs are these two added together are 25.2 so it's a 25.2 volt transformer and the current is rated at 0.45 amps 450 milliamps so you take 25.2 times the current rating that gives you the volt amps think of that as watts but we have to use volt amps with AC because of reactants and things. It's not exactly watts, but kind of gives us the idea. So what transformer would I use for a 16 watt amplifier? Well, my personal way of doing it is to select a transformer that, that has double the power rating. And this is maximum power, clean power before clipping. So I would select a 32 volt amp transformer for this amplifier. Now, sometimes you're dealing with stereo, you have two channels. So make sure you double that. So I have two channels at 16 watts a piece that's 32 watts then I double that to 64 watts or volt amps for the transformer so again my formula is just to double that and it works pretty good certainly you can go higher if you wanted to I really wouldn't go much lower though a lot of consumer products do kinda go lower but um, I, I would stay with that two times figure. There's two common types of transformers you would use. One is the toroidal type transformer 
and the standard transformer, also known as the EI core. They call it that because if you take the little laminations out that make up the core, they look like the letter E and the letter I. So that's where it gets its name. For many reasons I won't get into in this video, these are superior types of transformers to use, these toroids. However, you usually find these cheaper and if you get your parts out of old equipment, they're usually in the EI core type format. The amplifier itself doesn't really care. It just needs the voltage and the current delivered to it so it can drive the load to the wattage that you wanted in your circuit. But again, if money wasn't an object, I would select this type of transformer. Okay, so I set up a little power supply here and we'll try it with this transformer. Like I said, it's the 25.2 volt 0.45 amp 11.34 volt amp transformer. And this one that's larger, it's the same exact output voltage, 25.2, but it's 2 amps. And that's equal to 50.4 volt amps. So I want to see how the different size of transformer affects the output power. Even though we're feeding the amplifier the same voltage, when we put a load on it, it's going to affect the output power. So I hooked it up to this little bridge rectifier and filter capacitors as my little supply here. And then we'll hook it up to the amplifier and take some measurements. But first, I need to measure a few things here so I can show you some interesting tidbits about these power transformers. Okay, I have it hooked up to my Variac. I set it to 120 volts. And look at the output, the AC output from the transformer. Well, it's supposed to be 25.2, but we're getting 3 volts high. Why is that? Well, 25.2 is its output at load, at 2 amps. And this is running with no load right now. There's nothing connected to it except the meter. So the voltage is going to be quite a bit higher. It's called the load regulation. And it's usually around 10% in these types of transformers. So with no load, it's going to have a higher voltage. And that's going to really increase our DC output. And I'll show you in a minute. Okay, I now have hooked the meter probes to the DC output. In other words, across the rails of the supply from V minus to V positive. And look here. 37.8 volts. That's a lot higher than our 25.2, isn't it? Well, again, that's because of the no load voltage coming out of the transformer. And now it's actually getting the peak voltage because, again, there's no load on this power supply. So the voltage is going to go up to the peak value of you know, the output of this power supply. The reason I point this out is because when you're uh, building your amplifier and it's not drawing a lot of current, the voltage is going to go very high. So you want to make sure you choose the proper capacitors, you know, the voltage, and you don't want to exceed the value of your chip or your output transistors or you know any other part of your circuit. And when we start loading this down, we'll see that voltage decrease quite a bit. Okay, let's hook this thing up to the amplifier and get some measurements. 
Okay, I've hooked the amplifier up to the power supply using the 2 amp 50 volt amp transformer. Input goes to the music player 1 kilohertz signal. And I'm just using gator clips to the 4 ohm load. I'm not going to solder it direct like I did before. It might lose some power, but I'm going to scope at the load so we know exactly how much power is going into the load. So I'll turn the music player on and just and we're clipping. Oop, got a bad connection. So I want to adjust that just so the clipping is gone. Right about there. And we're getting 8.3 volts RMS. Let's stop that. Because these will get pretty hot. Okay, I need a calculator. How would I say 8.3 volts squared divided by 4 ohms? So we got 17.22 watts of output. So that was pretty close to what I wanted. Yeah, a little bit more. I wanted 16 and we got a little bit more. Okay, let's see what our power, I'm sorry, our voltage. Okay, the amplifier is sitting idle. Now it's not, uh, what was it before, 37.8. We are drawing an idle current, which pulls the voltage down. Let's see what happens when I turn this signal back on to our 17 volt output. Now look what happens. Drops to 30.2 volts 30.2 turn that off 30 that's about 15.1 the rails man I was pretty close so we did get a little bit more voltage and the rails are a little bit lower so we got that I guess that pretty close I think so that was fun. Now I want to see what happens when I hook up this smaller transformer. Okay, I've hooked up the 11 volt amp transformer and it's almost one-fifth the power of this one. That was 50 as you remember. This was 11 and it's the same exact voltage output though. So let's see what happens when I turn the power on. Okay, wait a minute. Well, the setting's still at the old transformer, but it wasn't clipping, but this one is. So I'm gonna have to turn that down quite a bit. Let's see, well. And we'll turn that up to there. It's clipping again. Okay. So now it's not clipping and it's six volts. We'll just say six volts. It's jumping around. So that is quite a bit less than before. Six volts, square that, divided by four. Nine watts. So yeah, we went from over 17 watts down to nine watts. Just because this transformer, even though it's the same voltage output, it cannot supply this amplifier with enough current to put out enough power. Another thing I wanted to try was see the dynamic power because this has the same output voltage pretty much when it's sitting idle. Capacitors will feed the amplifier the extra voltage before the, 
the transformer's limitation pulls the voltage down. So I captured a little segment here. Let's see here. We are clipping somewhat because it's hard to set exactly. But you can see when we started, the voltage was higher. And let me make that smaller. See how it drops down? Drops down quite a bit. After the capacitor's discharge. So it's, it's probably starting at a dynamic power of around 17 watts or so like we had with the first transformer and it drops down to to 9 watts because it cannot sustain that kind of power. And this little transformer is getting quite hot because we're drawing quite a bit of current from it. So it wasn't made to sustain such power. Well, that was pretty interesting. See how the effect of different size transformer has on our output power. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.